Alright everybody, uh, we're getting ready to do a Dreamcast teardown. First wanted to show this is what you're going to get in a kit. You'll get a flex cable, a couple M2 nuts and screws, um, the actual board itself, a backing adhesive, a drill block guide, and a Wi-Fi antenna. So let's put all this stuff to the side for now, except for this. We don't need these just yet, but we can put on the backing on this. This is just so there's no chance of shorting. I'm just going to peel this off. It's already pre cut. There is two little tiny holes. Um, looking for something to poke this with. So I'm just going to poke these holes out. Like so. And then we're just going to go ahead and go from the top. We're going to try to line the holes up best we can. That's close enough. Then we're just going to go over it. Like so. Now we can set that to the side. Let's go ahead and do the Dreamcast tear down. This is just a basic VA1 model with just a normal uh, GD-ROM drive. So, I'm going to take a screwdriver, pop open the modem, throw that backing away. I feel like this um, installs quite a bit easier than the Wii if you've done the Wii. I actually prefer this install over the Wii. I don't know, it just seems like it's a little bit funner. If that if you're into doing modding work, I guess. Alright, case just comes right off. This is just a bone stock unit. I figured that'd be best to do the teardown on. So there's no confusion. So continue still removing power board. switch to a little power drill here thing to make it go faster. So you don't just sit and watch me remove the screws. This pulls the GD-ROM unit out. Just again set that to the side. Now let's pull the controller port out. And I, uh, on the reassembly, I'll show where screws need to go because there is a few longer ones versus shorter ones. And there actually is possible to damage your motherboard if you put in the incorrect screws and the incorrect holes. So, just a little warning. I'm just going to go around the edge here. Up. Actually, I just didn't even really show you what I did there. So this this controller port sits below the heat sink. It's actually easier if you hold down on the power supply or the power pins to the motherboard and just pull up on this. This will pull the top heat sink out or the hot heat shield, which is a heat sink. If not, otherwise the whole thing will try and come out, and it makes it kind of awkward. It's just a little a little quick tip, and then to pull the motherboard out you just pull up. You always have to put the motherboard like this. It has to go in and up. Otherwise you'll hit this and won't be able to get it out or in. And right now I'm going to go ahead and remove these and I'm going to set them off to the side and we will put them back on. I just remove them because they fall off easy and they can get lost. 
normally they don't stick to the bottom of the motherboard, but if they do, uh, pay attention. Alright, so now we're going to set the motherboard off to the side. And we're just going to pull this metal shield out. And the case is going to go to the side. So, we're going to do, go ahead and do the case bottom modifications first and get the, all that going. So grab a pair of side colors like so. And we're going to make one little cut right here. This is to the back of the shield. And we're just going to do, actually I'm going to cut this side so I'm completely flush like that. And then I'm going to take some pliers. flatten this out because we are going to we want to remove this piece right here and we're also going to flatten this out and we also need to remove this entire piece right here now, how I normally do it is I actually have a vise um, in my garage, and I actually vise down this whole piece and bend it back and forth. It makes a real, real clean cut, and that's probably what I'm going to do now. If you do not have a vise, you're just going to need to take your pliers and rock back and forth to the metal, to the to the metal ends or bends and breaks off, and just keep working your way down. So I will be back in, I guess, no time for you. All right, that was instantaneous for you, but it took me about a few minutes. Um, so you can see I have these two pieces uh, bent off and snipped off. I'd, like I said, I did those on my vise, where I can just clamp it and rock it back and forth. So now, let's go ahead and set this back in here. And I'll kind of show you what we're doing. This wire's on the way, so hold on. All right. So the mod board is going to sit right here. So this needs to be pretty flat. Um, can't have any nasty, gnarly edges. That's why I prefer the bend method. I don't recommend you try and cut it. You could use a Dremel, um, but if you use a Dremel, make sure you uh, file off any rough edges so there's nothing that's sticking up. So next thing, we are going to use our drill block, which is right here. And this is where I recommend going slow. So, if you want to count these, you're going to be showing three and a half. You're always going to be showing three and a half little holes on this side, and that's where the drill block needs to go. For the main side, or to drill this out, we are going to be using a three and thirty second drill bit. So, this is actually pretty, you probably could use a smaller one, but I wouldn't recommend it. So you may kind of be like, well, why is this drill box a little loose, has a little bit of play? You'll notice that some cases don't have this play. Uh, so clearly there was some, the way they made more than one mold. I've experienced some where this block is extremely tight and doesn't move at all. Uh, sometimes it's a little loose. So I usually, if it's loose like this one, just push it to the bottom. Uh, has more lateral play. I mean, we're talking half millimeter maybe of play, so we're not talking much, but make sure to just push it to the bottom. Hold it with your finger, and then we're just going to drill. I'm going to put the three on the bottom first. We're just going to drill three consecutive holes. Now, obviously, don't drill your finger. Not really pushing crazy hard because um, there's no need to. So you can see three holes right next to each other. Now flip it upside down. Still showing three and a half holes. And we're going to put the two, there's two holes now on the bottom and those will go in between those uh, three holes. Just drill those out. I 
I recommend you leave the heat shield in because you'll or the bottom shield because you'll see why. So you can see that we have our three holes. They are partly connected. Let's see if we can get this to focus. There we go. So you're going to need a few small files. I'm going to be using these right here and then just a little bit bigger of a file. But these are still pretty small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these holes up. And I'm going to break them with this. You can, you can take a drill bit in there and rock it back and forth. But if you rock too high, you might um, damage it, which would be bad. Um, so I don't do that because this is one of those this hole is pretty critical about uh, how it sits, how it fits, um, about pressure so it's pretty important so I just broke all those little connections so now we kinda have a solid hole and all I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to file this so it's kinda flat and square This is one of those things where you need to take your time and go slow because if you overdo it, it'll look like garbage. And I'm definitely not trying to overshoot anything. I'm just trying to make this a good looking rectangle. And then from there, I'm going to take the mod board. And you can see the mod board sits in like so. Now, I'm going to show you what I'm going to see. See if you can see this. You may not be able to. So, I, I look inside the hole and see where material needs to be removed. Not much material needs to be removed on the top or on the right side, but I do need material removed on the left side and quite a bit on the bottom. So with that said, I will take my square file, my small square, and I'm just going to remove material on the left hand side. And I'm just going to put this back in to see how close I got. And I am pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. That was a good, pretty, pretty good close guess. I probably probably filed too much on that first go um, because if I would have missed it, um, I would have not been able to put that material back. So I'm going to go ahead and use my bigger file now and go ahead and go and file the bottom. the top off a little better square it off a little better and these files are nothing fancy they, uh, I would say, are really not that square, um, but I'm able to make them look pretty good for what I'm doing. So they're definitely only like eight bucks for a kit on Amazon. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and do a test fit. Getting pretty close. I've got some debris in the back here, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off. pretty close um, side to side we're just need a little bit and then a little more on the bottom still
can kind of, when I file, if I'm trying to remove a little bit of material or a lot, I kind of file hard, and then I more uh, put lighter pressure to try and kind of do a cleanup. I'm using this as a square, as a square edge to really make that, make those 90s nice and look look nice and you know all that jazz. All right, I think we're getting really close now. A little more on all sides. goes in the hole but it's grabbing some debris so we're just going to do a little bit more clean out I'm use my real small file and just remove just a little bit of material if there's anything hanging down because like I said it, it's entering the hole so it's close you don't want to force it in something that I really take my time on. I don't try and rush through it because this is the part that only people see when the case is together so if this part looks bad they'd probably assume everything else looks bad. And you can see it just went right in and it's actually pretty good on all sides. And this is what it looks like when it's done. You can see the hole looks pretty square to me. So now that we're in, we're going to take a smaller drill bit. This is a uh, 564th drill bit. You also could use a two millimeter drill bit as well. I don't have a metric drill bit system. I should drill bit kit. I should though. So we're gonna go over these holes. You see, there's four holes. The easy. So if you make this, if you file this hole out perfectly to where the HDMI is flat, you can use these two holes right here to mount it. Now, if you use this hole to mount it, you need to move this capacitor. And by move I mean desolder it and move it up just a little bit. Otherwise the screw hole will hit this capacitor. So if you don't want to do that you can easily use these two holes or you could use these two holes but this is this is the hole right here that the capacitor hits. I recommend this hole because when you mount it it doesn't put any force like when you when you screw screw this down, this puts lateral force on this HDMI HDMI port. If you put it here, this just this has a little bit of freedom and won't and allow this hole to not be perfect and not damage that. So I recommend this hole and this hole. Now some people may not like this hole because if you look at the bottom side, it's going to go through this this sticker, and it goes through right about here. Um, that doesn't bother me, but if some people are crazy about stickers, uh, if you are, make your hole perfect, put them up here, and move that capacitor. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drill this first hole. I'm going to just push pressure right here. Got through the heat shield. I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. You can see we went through right there on that sticker. Not a big deal. I don't think it's a big deal. Some people do. Um, so 
but that's why we gave them options. So now with these supplied uh, M2 nuts and screws, you're going to go ahead and put the one in for the hole we drilled. If I can show this on camera. It's just a standard screwdriver with a bolt or with a nut. I'm not going to over tighten just yet. Everything looks pretty good. Now we're going to go ahead and drill this hole right here. And use your last nut. Go ahead and get a little small pair of pliers. Actually, I could really can use anything. I'm going to use these side cutters just to hold the nut so I can put a little bit of pressure on this. I'm just doing that. You can use a pair of pliers, that would probably be the preferred method, but you know, I don't want to keep you waiting on camera. And just just making that a little tighter than what my finger can or what my thumb can do. So now, if you've got a USB GD ROM, I recommend hooking up a wire to the optional. Uh, pad right there and running it up and around. Uh, make it 10 inches or so. Uh, this does not have a USB GD ROM. If you have a GD EMU, you also can use that optional pad to control the button. Uh, if you don't want to solder to your GD EMU, just leave the button, just don't wire it. But for the USB GD ROM, it's for the reset. Um, so if you do in game resetting, it resets back to the menu. If you do not wire that uh, wire to the USB GD ROM, when you reset the Dreamcast, it'll, re it'll reload the previous loaded game. So if you are going to do that, there is a switch number one right here on this little dip switch. You're going to flick that on. By default, it's off. So we don't have any of those in our case, so we're going to leave them both off. This top dip switch right here is actually, if for some reason this unit gets bricked, you can reflash the ESP with these, um, you know, RXTX uh, programmer, and this switch is uh, puts it in programming mode. So leave that off as well. All right. So next step is the flex cable. So we are going to go ahead and uh, oh, there is one thing I actually forgot to say. So not all cases look the same. So you see right here, this has a little nub right here, and there's a little hole right here with no nub. Some of these cases have a nub here and a nub here. If there is a nub here, this one doesn't have the, this one doesn't have a nub underneath this. But if it does, you need to chop that off with side cutters or something because otherwise it'll have a little bit of a push up on this um, and you'll be able to feel it when you try and set this down um, so like I said this case doesn't have it uh, but I've seen a lot of cases that do so if it does have it make sure to remove this nub not this nub I'm sorry this nub underneath this and I will be back with the camera change all right, I'm back with not a camera change. I forgot to go over this step. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the Wi-Fi antenna. So just take it, push it on that little nub right there. It's self-adhesive, so just peel the tape off. And then just set it right up here. And then this will just sit just like that. All right, now we're going to switch cameras. So for this heat shield, where you put it on, we need to modify it right here. Two side cutters. We're gonna snip right there. Make one cut or one little snip. And take a pair of pliers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
bend this up. We're just going to flip it around. Let's get this piece in the middle. There you can see we have a little nice little opening. All right, here we're back on a motherboard view. This is the top side of the motherboard. Uh, see around here, here's the power port right here. So we're gonna be focusing on this chip right here and this chip. This is the video jack, this is the audio IC. So first thing we need to do is we need to remove these resistors right here so we can get this focused. There we go. So you're going to be removing these two resistors. Just drop a little bit of flux on. And then I'm just going to heat up both sides of my iron and just drag them away. And I'm going to clean up those spots because that needs to be flat. You can discard those resistors, by the way. And then we're clean. Now what we're going to do is... I need to flip this around so you can see better. So, let's see. There we go. So this capacitor right here... We need to drop a little bit of flux on this side. We're just going to put a little bit of solder, a little bit of leaded solder on this side. Just because it's a hard to heat area. And it's better to put solder on now because we won't have problems later on. Let's zoom back out. So now I'm just going to go ahead and spray a little bit of rubbing alcohol there and just wipe that area up where... I cleaned up because this is going to be covered up by a flex cable. All right, so now we're going to take our flex cable that lays just like this. Now, if you have a if you have a VA zero, there's going to be a uh, thermal resistor connector right here, and this will have to go up and over like that, but it will still fit. So how I how I place this cable is I line it up down on the audio IC chip first. So let's zoom into that. Let's see if we can get that to focus a little better. Alright, this looks like that's good as we're gonna get. So you need to leave three pins on the bottom. So those three pins are not connected. So let's drop some liquid flux down there. I'm gonna keep my iron pretty low, like 315. Just gonna put a little dab of solder, don't really need much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this cable in place by grabbing this resistor array. And then I'm just going to put a couple dabs. And for a future revision, I might um, redo this end because actually only four pins are used. All these pins up here are not used. They're just there for support and I probably could omit them in a later revision. So, so you don't have to solder all these. I'll put a little bit more flux. Put just a tiny bit more solder on my soldering iron.
and the pins that actually do matter, there's a ground right here, and then I think this one and this one and this one go to this resistor array. I have to relook at the schematics. They're not all connected. So next step, we're going to focus in on this IC. And it should line up pretty close. Um, each, each how each chip lays and solders down may move a little bit. So if you have a little bit of flex in your cable, that's okay. But what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and line this up. See, I'm going to push this down a little bit so I'm more aligned. I'm just going to hold it with my finger. Just definitely just stuck my finger with the iron. I'm going to hold this right here so we're lined up. I'm just going to do these pins right here. You can see the cable is raised up a little bit. I'm going to go and push it down right here. I'm just going to solder this end. Just right now, I'm actually kind of like bringing solder up from the bottom of this IC. You can see where that's where all the solder is coming from. It's not coming from my iron. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it around for me to be easier to solder. Let's see if I can get it lined up on the camera though. Okay. Flux. I put just a little bit of solder on my iron. This helps kind of bring that solder up from the bottom. If you ridge a pin, don't worry about it. Just kind of keep doing what you're doing. Alright, so now we're looking pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and inspect each pin more regularly. So it looks like the pins aren't connected, but they're actually connected underneath. And I can see that on my microscope. Um, I like to make them look like they're connected on top, so I usually take a little bit more solder, and I am going to go over them again, and you see I really dropped a lot more solder on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that solder away from the flex cable. So now I have a solder bridge down here, which is okay. So I'm going to just use a little bit of just a little bit of wick. Just don't want to use the wick really necessarily on the flex cable. I don't want to damage it. So those bridges are gone. We're going to do the same thing to this right here. If I can find it. Put a little bit less solder on. Again, fill those holes in, and that looks pretty good. Alright, so the rest of the stuff we need to do on this. First, we're going to focus, so I'll rotate around so you can see it better. The back side of this cap right here that we put that little thing of solder for. I'm actually going to turn my iron up a little bit. This is a, even though it's a positive area, it's a plus, it's a, um, it's a plus 3.3, or, no, it's not plus 3.3, it's plus 5. It, it just is, takes a lot of, um, power to heat up. Actually, I'm sorry, it's a ground. I don't know what I'm thinking. Anyways. So I'm holding this, holding this cable down, and then I'm just going to take my iron. Get a good connection. All right. 
Almost done with the flex cable. Just a few more, a few more connections. So now we're gonna do these two holes right here. So just get your solder loaded up on your iron or on your tip. Push this down so it's flat. I'm going to go and fill that in. Some more solder on your tip. I'm going to fill this hole in right here. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more to this. And we're not done over here yet. We're going to add, we're going to make two connections right here. So I'm going to go into feed solder, and this is a kind of a long bridge. I'm also going to bridge this right here. I'll clean that up so it's better, not so shiny, so it'll be easier to see. And JP1 should also be jumped. So go ahead and jump JP1. And then I'm going to go down to this area right here. We're going to solder this connection on. And it is on. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can kind of do a little better inspection. Take a little bit of a toothbrush and just kind of Break anything up. It's real nice and gentle. I'm going to take a paper towel and just kind of try and soak up the rest of the IPA. Now, at this point, um, you probably should have some type of magnification, whether it's um, like a jeweler's loop or something, but I'm going to inspect each pin. Make sure there's no bridges. If you're unsure, use a continuity tester. And I can tell you, again, what we soldered. We went all the way across here. We've got solder in these holes right here, connection on these, we jumped at JP1, we had a connection back here, made connections all on these, and on these, and on this. And the flex cable looks good. I think that's everything we'll need for the close-up. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to switch the camera back. Alright, we're back. Okay, so we've got the flex cable on, so now we need to hook up the pad connections and the reset. So flip the motherboard over, and we're going to be focusing in on these resistors right here. R6 or R40. I'm sorry, the board upside down. The other side of the board, we're looking at R601 and R602. So take a fairly long piece of wire. I'm getting a piece off. I'm using probably 16 inches. I don't know, it's pretty long. And I'm going to go ahead and just snip both sides. Or de-shield both ends. Put a little bit of zoom in on here. Close as I can get. So on the back side of these resistors, 601 and 602, I'm just going to put a little bit of pre-solder on. And then Solder 601. The back side just straight on. 
this is the same wire actually it's looped so on the other side the reason I loop it so this wire is connected and so these wires will be the same length so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and then for the wire for 601 I'm gonna go ahead and strip it that'll make sense more later on I'm not gonna strip the other wire this helps me just keep track of what wire goes to what and then you're gonna need another piece of wire um, probably, I don't know, 10 inches, 8 inches, something like that. Go ahead and strip one end of it, and then see this IC. Two zero six. There is a test pad right there next to that triangle. That's what we're going to solder to. This is the reset circuit for the Dreamcast. Just a little bit of solder, and just solder this wire on to that hole. Now what I like to do, this is 100% optional, but it's just what I do, is I grab a little bit of heat shrink tubing, there's some small stuff. I'm going to go ahead and cut a couple pieces off. I'm going to go ahead and put these on. And I will I uh, shrink them down a little bit. Not right now, they're just temporary. motherboard back over here on the bottom side with the mod board. Let's go ahead and zoom out. This is, I don't want to say tricky, but it's not the easiest thing to do. So how I do it is, I turn the motherboard like this. We're going to be soldering to these pads right here. So, and I made these wires too close. I think this is the reset. But I will confirm. The reason I make those wires the same link is so I know that they're both pad controllers. And the reset's supposed to be different, but I made the reset too close of a length. But I should be able to, yep. So this is the reset. So what I'm gonna do is, under the pad RST, I'm gonna go ahead and get a good length here. And cut it. So you can see what I'm doing. So that's cut. And strip this. I add just a little bit of solder to these. They already have solder, but you know, fresh solder, a little more of it. To make things easier. solder this to the RST which stands for reset and then the reason why I cut or stripped one of these is because that is P1 so the one so R601 goes to P1 and R602 goes to P2 so the one I stripped earlier goes to R601 so that's right there so I know that this one goes to R or goes to P2 if you want to verify 100% you can use a continuity tester. If you do hook them up backwards, nothing is gonna, catastrophic is gonna happen. You're just not gonna be able to open up the OSD or use the controller with the mod. And you don't have to take it apart, which is annoying. So here's the last one. R601 goes to P1. tubings around. Use my hot air station. 
You could use a lighter if you wanted to. Just gonna shrink these down. This just helps keep the wires looking semi-organized under the motherboard, even though you can't really see them. I'll get these wires out. And remember, if you are using a USB DRAM, I recommend hooking up the optional pad right here and having a wire run out and flipping this to one or flipping one to on. Yeah, we need to cut this little knob off right here. So, as I said, we're gonna flip this around. Just gonna grab some side cutters. Just remove that. All right, we got the screw boss off. So don't forget these thermal pads right underneath here. That we took off first. Let's go and hook the flex cable up. It goes in nice and easy. And we're just gonna drop it in. Make sure that we're not pinching any wires. We're not. Watch out for the fan cable over here. Its job is to get stuck in the heat shield in this every time. Alright, so now, uh, before that, go ahead and plug in the... Try and bring this camera out a little bit. Plug this guy in. And then we're going to drop the heat shield on. you where the screws go. Got a black here. Make sure this is seated all the way. We've got a black here. Black screw goes here. Black screws go on the AV ports and serial port. Short gold goes right up here. You have one spare gold because we took that screw boss off. Let's grab this guy. Plug this in. Kind of got to put it in at an angle. There'll be four long golds. Got to hold this in. Any other gold, but I'll get back to it. Go ahead and plug our flex cable in. This guy right here, plastic thing. Put this wire underneath. Then the power supply will drop right in. right here go ahead and plug this in all right let's go ahead and plug the GD ROM drive in it goes right there they'll be held in by three short golds this point probably a good time to test so let's go ahead and boot up a good test take your mini HDMI and you get a power supply now this will automatically boot up in non VGA mode this is to help you determine your issues 
boot it up automatically. Yeah, so if you boot up in VGA mode, you can't test with a composite video cable. So we uh, set it up to boot up in non-VGA so you could throw a composite on, and that would let you know if your, if your issue lies on like a bridge connection on the DAC with the flex cable. So let's go ahead and plug in a controller. I've got video jumping straight to the Dreamcast. And you can hear I've got audio too. Gotta to reset the reset the clock. And then at this point, go ahead and test the controller or the on-screen display. So you hold down left trigger, right trigger, start X and A. And I got a on-screen display up. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the video mode settings to Force VGA. It's gonna ask me to reset. The Dreamcast should reset. Uh, Vizio TV stinks. It's gonna be an invalid format, but that's just because it's a dumb Vizio TV. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the console on and off and turn it back on. Now I've got a solid 480p signal. I'm going to go ahead and open OSD again. And go to 1080p. And that, like that setting. And now at this point, you need to uh, update the firmware on the unit. Because uh, as of sending these kits, there will be a uh, firmware update available. So the easiest way to do that is you. there is a in the OSD you can set up the wireless that way but it's going to be easier to do it via your phone alright now the easiest thing to uh, set up the Wi-Fi is going to be using a phone so we're going to go ahead and do that um, this is obviously on an Apple but it will work fine on Android you're going to connect to the DC firmware manager and the password is going to be G E H E I M one two three four going to hit join. That's going to connect. And then we're going to go to open up a new page. It's going to go 192.168.4.1. Now it didn't ask me for a password, but it'll ask you for a password. It's going to be user is test with a capital T and then the password is going to be test test no space and what this is going to do is this is going to set us through a walkthrough on how to set up Wi-Fi to it so I'm going to go ahead and put my lab country in like so I'm going to put my Wi-Fi password in I'm going to hide it so you don't see it because I'm creepy like that and then it's going to ask me for the over-the-air password. This is to do a um, update manually over the air. Um, just create a password um, that you know and then remember. You probably will never use it though. Firmware server, server will be the default. Firmware version will be master. The HTTP user is that's that username you put in at the beginning. Um, you can leave it as test and test test. It's up to you. IP address. This would be for people that want to set up if they don't have like a DNS server on their um, network, if they want to s or specify a specific IP address, it's totally up to them. Gateway, the same thing with the NetMask and DNS. Host name, this is a a way to, to get to the host directly. And let's see, video output. Right now, since it says default VGA, but since we changed it to 1080p, it says 1080p. So we're going to leave it at 1080p. And it's the same thing on Set on Force VGA. And then the optional reset mode is LED, which is by default. And then I'm going to go ahead and ask me if I want to save. I'm going to say yes. And now I'm going to go ahead and type in reset, which will kick off a reset on the Dreamcast. And now, yeah, let's see here. Sorry, I'm not showing you guys any video of anything. But now, I'm going to open up the OSD. I'm going to do a firmware upgrade. I'm going to hit check. And 
I found some updates, so it connected, successfully connected to my Wi-Fi network. I'm going to download those updates. All the little music you hear in the background is just jumping around in the menu as I'm in the OSD. And it's currently downloading the ESP firmware. Now it's downloading the index. Now we're going to go and flash it. It's flashing the FPGA firmware right now. Now it's flashing the ESP. And it is finished flashing. Now we're going to kick off a restart. And now we'll have the newest firmware um, set up for the system. And that is uh, pretty much the install. After that we can um, turn it off. Put our case back on. I always put the cases on with the lid open. That way it doesn't snag any of the things. I'll go ahead and finish all of this while you're here. Screw that rolled off because they should be all black. And there it is. I already put a screw in there. Sorry, wrong hole. Goes in this one. Successfully installed a DC HDMI kit to a VA, VA1 Dreamcast. Thanks for watching.